Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Tapping with Tristan. We got another long live Amityville edition. I'm really excited about this guest. Uh, before we get into it, I want to want you to you know make sure that you guys hit that subscribe button for me and click that notification bell. So when this beautiful content comes back, you guys will know when it's hitting. So without further ado, we have Miss Tasha Owens. Talk hello. To hello. 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 <laughs> yeah. How we been doing? I'm blessed, man. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Feeling like so just full lately. So I love it. I love it. I love I've, I've seen some of the things that you've been doing recently. Uh, so we're definitely going to touch upon that. So I appreciate you taking time out of your schedule. Oh, yeah. This is yeah, good. I was good. like, OK, because I usually record around this time myself. Mm -hmm. So I said, let me, you know, get ready. I had to get centered. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Get, get, get in that space that you need to be in for this conversation. But all in all, we want to celebrate you. Uh, you're Thank a success you. story coming from Amityville. So we want to talk mm -hmm. to you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you know, we was in school school together. Uh, what mm -hmm. class are you? Let them, let them know what class you are. Oh, class of 99. Yeah, yeah. class of 99. Yeah, we partied like it was 1999. That was our theme. So, yeah. That's a fact. That's a fact. So a lot of a lot of great people have come out of Emmyville, including yourself. So let's talk a little bit about growing up. What what did childhood look like for you? Oh man. Okay. So first, I'm gonna say, throw a disclaimer. I've come a long way. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I just, let me see. Uh, Amityville, born and raised. Um, we're talking about middle school. Played sports in seventh grade. You know, basketball. Um, I did cheerleading on the off season or whatever. Um, <laughs> Right. Um, you know, track, play, you know, just loved playing sports, knowing that, you know, you, in order to play, you had to have good grades. So I was definitely in my books. I wouldn't say I was, you know, like, uh, that's, I just did what I had to do to stay. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> am I eligible? <laughs> in my work, am I eligible? <laughs> right, that's it. <laughs> um, and yeah, so that was pretty much my life was sports different sports and things like that you felt like that was one of your that was one of your outlets so what was some of the outlets that you felt like you had coming up Amityville we got a lot of different types of people that you know have different backgrounds and different stories and everything what do you feel like your yeah yeah your, your main outlet was um in that childhood yeah well dealing you know with you know being an 80s baby you know parents my parents had separated they were unfortunately they had a moment you know the uh global pandemic uh, epidemic of drugs and stuff came through my yeah. family. So I was raised with my grandmother yeah. struggling to make it. So my outlet was sports, right? You know, that was the thing. Once I was able to play, cause you know, now kids are playing at five and six and their parents are paying for these leagues. <laughs> my, my family couldn't afford it. So when yeah. seventh grade hit and it was time, you know, I, that's what I dug into. I went to playing sports, not having to be home because I was, you know, it's so it was, it, that was my outlet was playing sports and just staying involved and that was social for me that was my social right. life right appreciate you being transparent because like 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 you said man that time it hit not just our neighborhood but you know a lot of neighborhoods across the country particularly hard uh in the urban communities where where you know you had the drug use and stuff and it and, and it really it frayed a lot of a lot of uh households yeah so, yeah. I can I I can relate to that that the the sports being an outlet, you know what I mean? And and, and then there's a lot of like, all right, what's going to be next for me? And then you gotta navigate who who you're gonna be around, you know what I mean? Right. Who's around you? Right. So you got all of these different people, peer pressure pulling at you and everything like that. So I think sports is a big outlet for us and, and you can attest to that. Yes, yeah, it's, it's very important because I think about when I wasn't playing sports the things that I was doing, you know, I was running in the streets with different girls and fighting and, the, you know, just nonsense. And the sports kind of refocused me realizing that, you know, this is really, I'm around other positive people. I have adult influence. Right. And my coach used to come and pick me up because I didn't have a ride. And yeah. so those influences kind of, I think would round, would, would shape me because I could have most certainly went a whole nother route, you know that's what I mean? So that's a fact. So yeah. Yeah, and 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 
you know, like you said, it's a positive outlet. It opens many doors for you as you get older. So this is something that we want to talk about and it'll tie into your story very well, that there are other lanes outside of just the sports. Yes, you know, absolutely. In the urban community, you look at sports, rapping, and then even people kind of get in the drug game. But there's many other outlets and sports kind of leads to a lot of other opportunities and opens up your world. So like you said, there are some of our peers for one reason or another, you know what I mean? They have a lot of responsibilities at the house. Mm -hmm. They're able to make money, like all these different things to kind of pull them left. Yes, yes. You know what I mean? And so I think who, who do you feel like with some of the uh, people, whether it be adults or or peers that kind of helped you like, let's, let's kind of look at this path, you know, the sports yeah. and some of the other extracurricular activities. Name some names. Yeah, well, I would say like, okay, so if I'm talking about sports specifically, the, the women that were, or the girls at that time mm -hmm. that were before me, like mm -hmm. Sharice Hinkson, Valen Henderson, Rhyne Smiley, like they were, they kind of like took me under their wing yes. as the, the rookie or the, yeah. you know, because Although I was, I was, I played up, you know what I'm saying? As my age, like a lot of my girls that was my age, class of 99 was on JV when I was on varsity. Right. So I'm playing with them and they're showing me, they're showing me the positive, they're working there, you know, so they took me on there as like little sis, you know, even to this day, I'm like little sis. And then <laughs> <laughs> Sharice and I are very close. And then Mr. Buyer, like, there we go that dude like and they just recently you know had the dedication to him so i Absolutely. definitely was in the building and like i said although he was my he was my middle school um uh home, yeah my, man, he wasn't my teacher he was my homeroom oh i got you okay okay right okay. but um when i got to high school it was just his reinforcement and just encouraging me you know being that father figure yeah. You know, um, even though at that time my dad was back in my life, but he still was that second dad. Like I can call him, talk to him. And, you know, then Dottie Coleman, rest in peace, uh, yeah. a phenomenal, you know, always supporting us, always being there. So yeah, just those two, I mean, you know, was really impactful in my life and in my development for sure, for sure. Yeah, I, I can co-sign that, I agree hundred percent. So thank you for naming those names and it's pivotal in, in, in our community and, and others to have some of those pillars. Yeah. yeah and they did sure. it and, and they were super unselfish and selfless. So we appreciate them for, for that. So yeah, let's talk about high school. What did that look like? You know what I mean? You, you, <laughs> you're on varsity, you know what I mean? You kind of navigated your way through the middle school, which is a tough time is that yeah that's it let's talk a little bit about middle school then we'll go to high school just give us a a, a nutshell of what middle school was. that's a tough time it's in the yeah it's, in, it's right in the right in the like a lot of people you got a lot you got some real tough boys and girls you got people in the streets you got people that are doing a little bit of everything so yeah. how do you, you navigate that well middle school I, right now i'm an educator i've been teaching 12 years so i always say that middle school is the jungle right because they don't, they're, they're just now getting that freedom because no. in elementary school, you have one teacher, you stay with that teacher the whole time. When you get to middle school, you now have different classes. So you have to grow up in a sense, but mentally, developmentally, you're not there yet. So no. now you don't, you're, you're all over the place. And then as you know, you don't have the high school mentality of I need to graduate, I need to get out. So the middle school is a jungle, right? Yeah, I <laughs> and agree. I was in the mix of the jungle. Like, I mean, again, not having my parents at that time, that was the hardest part for me because they came back, got themselves together, got back. It's still all in my book, but got yeah. themselves back together and um, by, by high school. So okay. Middle school, I was just trying to fit in. I was going through my ugly duckling stage, you okay. know. I was trying to be down with the cool girls. Um, yeah. I was always targeted. It, it just seemed like, you know, uh, it was kind of like I, I wasn't, I didn't have the clothes. My sister and I shared clothes or whatever. So it was like I was targeted and I always was on a defense. I was just angry. Right. So again, when seventh grade hit, that was, okay, I'm going to do this because okay. as angry and as this um, unstable and all these things going on in my life, I could easily go this way, you yeah, know, so facts. that that's when, I mean, I remember the whew, middle star was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. middle school was rough, you know, and uh, I'm just grateful that I did have that outlet with sports. I really so am. Who, so who was instrumental in that time? What were some of these people you mentioned in that time or did you have somebody else that was? Oh, no. oh yeah. So middle school, I would say Miss Mays, 
Miss um, Mays. Oh yeah, Miss Mays. Uh, Dr. 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 Mays now. She 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 done. Oh yeah, right. Excuse me. Pardon. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and Mr. Miller. Mr. Miller. Like yeah. Them two. I mean, those are the two that I can really um and Mr. Gonza, like, you know. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Gonza. <laughs> like, yeah. So, uh, he would, oh my goodness, he was like, okay, Tasha, like, you know, you gotta, you gotta yeah, do the absolutely. right thing. So yeah, Miss, Miss, um, Dr. Mays, Mr. Miller, and Mr. Gonza, for sure, were the, um, you know, with like the, the parent figures or, you know, the adult yeah. starting in my oh, life. My the grandmother bulk of, the bulk, During the bulk of your, your middle school career. That's beautiful. Shout out to them. But, but, but like you said, and, and I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of people didn't know this about your backstory until right. probably later on. You only a handful of people know, and a lot of them are dealing with stuff. Right, right. And you're kind of, you're kind of like you said, I really like what you said. You're in between all of these kind of like areas in the middle school. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of us don't know how to cope with that, and their parents don't know how to cope with that. It's so, so you're just one big pressure cook, and everybody's like, you know, ganging up on each other. For sure. So, and, you know, counseling and therapy, that's that was taboo in the black community. You know, uh, it's just now becoming something to really, you know, look into mental health and all of that. So we didn't have that. It nah. was kind of like, get it together, you know, get it together, get it together. Or, you know, what I'm saying you, you, you look in the beat up or jump somebody else just, yep. just to get the frustration out. Right. And, right. And okay. Unfortunately, that's the way. So, yeah, there's there's things that are going on internally for a lot of these young adolescents. And they're looking for a way. It's a lot of cry for help. So uh, that's cool that you were able to even express that. We'll talk about some of the things you, uh, you, you said with your book. But moving forward, we got through it. Yeah. Thank God. <laughs> we, yeah, thank you, Lord. We got through this thing. Yes. Now we're in the high school, right? Yeah. It's a different feel. Am I right? It's a different feel in the high school. It's almost a sigh of relief. But you're dealing with you're dealing with more mature people. Some of them going to school. You got big guys walking around like men, you know, beards, you know, and it's like, it's a different environment, but at the same time, you have to kind of level up in your maturity. Yes. So absolutely. tell me, tell me, tell me that feel for you. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, high school, it was like, I was stepping, you know, the ugly duckling stage was gone. You know, I was, I knew already what I, what I thought I wanted to do. Right. I felt like I was on the path. I knew I was going to college. I was going to play D one ball and all of this. And, um, I had a car working, you know, buying my own clothes. I wasn't yeah. sharing clothes anymore. Right. You know, I had a, a, a solid circle of friends and, you know, teachers too, that were, you know, inspiration to me. And that helped me like, um, my chorus teacher, um, oh goodness, I forgot her name. Miss Turk. Miss Turk, yes, Miss Turk, yes, absolutely. She, her and I had this love-hate relationship, but. Yeah. God bless her. I, God yes. bless, I think she passed away not too long ago. I think but so God, too. God I bless her, too. but my goodness, what a sweet lady. We, because I was in the chorus class when I got yep. through. We, we, we used to give her run for her money. She needed she a raise. She never every gave up on class. us. If you really think about it, she never gave up on us. Not one time, not one time. We gave her a hard time all the time. Yep, yep. So yeah, so high school was definitely a, a, a brighter side of the story, you know, and personally in my family, my parents got back together. Right. We moved out of my mom's house. We were now living on our own, you know, right. so things was looking good, you know, at that point. And I'm just, I just, you know, I'm grateful for it. And, you know, that they found time to come back and found the maturity and the, you know, worked it out for us because that ultimately statistics say that although, you know, they don't have to be, um, parents don't have to be addicted to drugs or whatever, but when you separate, it does something to the kids, Changes whether, the whether you co-parent or, you know, you're well with it, but it still does something. So for them to even work it out and to be together till this day is just, you know, was a blessing. And that was like a, a, a pivotal moment for us as a family. Oh. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so that thank you again for being transparent. I think this is this is this is awesome. Now we are in high school. You're talking about going playing D1 ball and doing all of these <laughs> other cool things that you know what I mean. That's what we're thinking. That's our lane, right? So, how did that shape up for you? How did it, how did your high school career turn out? You know what I mean with the sport. What sports are we playing? We know basketball is in the mix. Is that the only one? Um, no, I did track. I you also track did too, right? leading. Yeah, yeah, I did track. And when I decided not to do track anymore, the track coach, like, Hunt, 
he hunted my father down. Like she must, she has to do track. He's like, well, she doesn't want to do it anymore. Like, what and made he, you not want to do it no more? You just wasn't feeling it? Yeah, I just, I felt like um, it just wasn't, it wasn't what I wanted to do. I just did it naturally because I was fast. fast. You know what I'm saying? I was fast and I just did it, you know. Like, I'm done with it. I'm good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, just again, to keep the social and just to be doing something, I did cheerleading during football season because yep. I could have just did nothing, right? Yeah, yeah. But I wanted to continue the momentum of being around p- positive people, Miss Droz, and just, yeah. you know, being in an environment that would keep me from that left path or doing Absolutely. the things, you know, cause it still was there, but it's, you know, always there. it's still there. People are still trying to, you know, pull you here and there. And you just, I got to go to practice. I got to, right. you know. <laughs> so, I got a game. I got to go from there. Yeah. 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 So, but, um, and then from there, I was like, okay, if I'm not going D1, I'm not going to school. Now, mind you, I've always had honor roll. I always got uh-huh. good grades. So it's like, how you say you're not going to school if you don't go D1, right? Right. So fast forward just a little bit. Mr. Bai is like, yo, there's this camp, this blue chip. It's called Blue Chip. It's a camp mm-hmm. that I want to take you to, whatever, you and your dad, whatever, whatever. And then that was the same weekend of homecoming. And I was nominated. Yeah. Yeah, I was nominated for homecoming. So you know me, I'm going to win and eh, 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 whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> feeling, 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 feeling real good about things right now. <laughs> right. And my mom, and my, I'm like, the camp it's like that's homecoming so my mother's like oh we got to get you a dress my father's like oh what are we doing so I chose the camp okay. you know what I'm saying I forfeited possibly winning homecoming queen which is something that all girls want or whatever yeah. in high school yeah to chase after what my dream was was to play right. basketball right and the outcome of that was I was um recruited for d3 Right. And I did play ball. So <laughs> I was able to go away and play basketball. So it was like right. it was a good choice. Right. And, uh, so you feel like it was a good choice. Mm-hmm. That's a very mature choice. Cause like you said, that's a that's that's that and prom. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's those are two monumental events yes. for a young lady, especially on the home home uh, homecoming court. And you said, now nah, I'm gonna go do this because I think this is gonna positively impact my future. Absolutely. And it was like you said, it wasn't easy. No, it's not I easy. Knew, I knew that that was the better choice. I wow. knew that, you know. I can't say that I would have did it. <laughs> <laughs> we been, you know, by y'all have been dress shopping. Like, I don't know. We, we, we about to turn up. So, man, that's, right. that's super mature. So, we get through this pressure cooker at Amityville with all of the different hurdles and obstacles that you had, you know what I mean? And your, your own personal life, you graduate. Mm-hmm. You graduate class of 1999. What's the thought process, that process now? That's one of the toughest transitions. I try to tell a lot of these young kids that I happen to work with and, you know, just have relationships with through, through, through uh, family and friends. That's a tough one because now you're considered an adult. Right, right. What was right. your story? What was that transition for you? Um, well, I didn't really get to, because like when, when, when it was time to graduate, it was a sign of relief, right? But then it was also like, because I never questioned whether I was going to graduate or not, right? But yep. um, it was a sign of relief. But then it was like, okay, next day, next, next day. day, right? And literally the day of my graduation, I had to report to my college for the summer program. So wow. most people are, you know, graduating and then they got the summer to get ready. Yeah. I literally, that same, I got to, I was one of the last people to arrive at the campus for the summer program. So they I really didn't have a They like, we ain't waiting for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I got there late. It was dark. Everybody had already set up their rooms and everything. And here I come. But I didn't have that moment to like just sit and reflect or just, you know, have the summer to like, I ain't got to go to school. Yeah, I got friends. a couple months. I'm just going to just let this rock a little bit, go to a couple parties. And Thanks. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Talk my trash a little bit. Nope. I had to go right there. And it was just like, wow. But again, that was another, you know, um, it was another pivotal moment for me because I was traveling now, right? I was seeing outside of Amityville. Oh, where did you go? Like, are you local? Talk, talk to us. Where did you, where did you go? Are you in state? Are you out of state? Okay. Yeah. No, I was still in state. I went to Mount St. Mary College in Newburgh, Newburgh, New York. How far um, is that from, from home? That's about two hours, two hour drive. Okay. Good, yeah, but it's, I felt like I was home a little bit because it was a little hood, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I recognize this environment. <laughs> 
Oh, I'm yeah. like, oh, we got a number one Chinese spot. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Gonna, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna fit right in here. I know this all the way. Right, it was like, but the campus was like something like Dawson's Creek, right? But if you go like five minutes up the block, you were yeah. in the hood, right? So <laughs> it was like so different. They would tell you during uh, orientation, like you know, kind of, and not so many words of leave campus on your yeah. own. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But for me, I felt like I, I felt like I was home in a sense. That's like, familiar was, to me. I'm about to go get some Chinese food. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, that's, that's, yeah, I'm going. That's why I'm going home. <laughs> right, right, exactly. But no, it was a. Um, I loved it. I think that was probably my favorite because although you know I knew a lot of people that came in right first semester, second semester, and they ended up getting sent home right. because they couldn't adjust with, exactly. you know, cause no one's coming to check on, mommy's not waking you up. Nope. Nobody's telling you to go, you're not, you know what I'm saying? You gotta do what you gotta do. So one thing I had is self-discipline and that's something that still carries with me. It's just, I'm a party on Wednesday, but I'm going to class on Thursday. You see uh -huh. what I'm saying? Like, whereas my friends may party, don't go to class, whatever the case may be, but I knew that there needed to be, there needed to be balance. Yep. You know, so, and I think that also may go back to high school, having to be to practice early on Saturday morning, yeah. Yeah. having to, you know, juggle homework. And so it kind of prepared me for yeah. this next level. Absolutely. And you have, and you had things going on at home that, uh, uh, that kind of shaped you to be a bit more mature. Right. And handle handle sure. a lot more responsibility at an earlier age. So you're like, I'm equipped for this. I for got sure. my time management and my, my, my self-discipline. So Let's fast forward through the college years. What, what's it look like young adulthood? You know what I mean? Now we're out there in the world. You know? <laughs> There's no pause button on this thing, Tasha. You're like, what? You know what I mean? Like, right. you feel like, man, this is what I was, what, what is looking. And then there comes a time where it's like, all right, what's my purpose? And I think that you're kind of finding that so we can kind of tie that in. So young adulthood. Okay, so let's talk like, okay, so when junior year college, right? Yep. I come home, got my little boyfriend or whatever, yep. um, go back to school in August, find out that I'm pregnant. Okay, so, junior year college. Junior year college. Okay. So now I'm embarrassed, ashamed, right? I got to tell my coach that I can't play anymore, which the whole way it worked out was that he was director of admissions. So he was able to get me into the school through this program and everything, right? Right. So junior year, I'm beginning of junior year, I'm pregnant. All okay. through junior year, I'm pregnant and I had to quit. Um, I stayed, I, I hid it from my family for six months. Wow. Like didn't come home, didn't. And it was, that was a hard time for me. And I'm grateful wow. for the relationship that I create, the relationships that I had in college. My yeah. college friends, there was guys and girls that was there for me. Yeah. Driving me back and forth home two hours. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah just and so now I, I go home summer I have my child and now I gotta decide am I going back to school for my senior year right right um am I gonna take a year off because I'm a mom right am I going to um and and it just get, I get a little you know whatever but then it's like am I going to um transfer locally yeah. right because I can do that but if I transfer I'm gonna lose this many credits I'll lose some credits with it right I'm gonna, gonna push it back I was going to stop. My father's like, no, my dad was like, no, we'll take care of it. My baby was three months old when I went back to school, Wow. back to school. And he was like, no, we'll take care of the baby. You know, you go to school, finish up or whatever. And, um, and that was okay. Right. I'm coming back every weekend. So I'm taking yeah, yeah, three hours back. on the train going on Friday, three hours on Sunday to come back just to spend how many, what a day and a half with okay. him. But that was that chapter. I got to do it. I gotta I do it. Kids. It was just, it was like, that's my kid, you know? Right. And um, one moment, he was about eight months at this time, and he kind of like shunned me for my mom, you know? Yeah, he's, she, more used yeah. To, he's used to, he's used to your mom. And that broke my heart. So I took him back to school. <laughs> he was like, pack up. You gotta come with me. We can't have no more. He come on the train with me. <laughs> I said, oh no, you know, this I'm I'm doing all of this for him, right? Right, right. And I said, no, no, no shade to my mom or not like that, but I just said no. Nah. Yeah, and I'm not a private. Mom, I'm mom. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not a private Catholic school. So I forgot to mention that part, right? right? So my girlfriends, my girl, we're still friends to this day, made their schedules. We made our schedules so that when I'm in class, they can watch my baby. And so they can help me with him. Yeah, they can help you, you know what I'm saying, with watching the baby. 
uh, how cool i mean that that's that's love right there yeah. <laughs> exactly i don't know how I'm I'm just hearing that that's that's powerful that's really powerful um and, and I, I know you're, you're kind of caught in a place like what the heck am i going to do you know what i mean like you said you got all these emotions that you're dealing with you know what i mean I, I, but now you got this life that you got to take care of too ah. and, and and you don't know you don't know if your support system is going to support and it sounds like you had a, a, a fair amount of support so that's a blessing for you to yeah, keep going forward truly truly it was i mean it was nothing but a blessing because i i don't know how else it would have worked you know that's a fact. and the day that i graduated the next day he turned one wow so it's just like you know i just feel like god that's why my book is called um how to grow forward from past pain sis stop sulking god's plan is greater right because wow. we may plan all of these things or we may see things and then it doesn't go our way and we're all down, depressed and this, that, and a third, but in all actuality, he has the ultimate say. It's his plan. It's he, you're going to walk in your purpose, whether you like it or not, because that's what he, that's what you're here for. Right. So, I mean, that's just what it is. So I'm just grateful for the journey, although it may have been rough, rough and rocky and all of these things, but there also was some blessings, right? Absolutely. And there's beauty inside of the obstacles and the struggle, because like you said, now you're, you're, because you did it, you can speak to it. And Absolutely. hopefully you can you can help somebody that's either going through it or you can help keep another person away from some of the things that they don't need to be. So let's tie this thing. Let's tie this in. What are we doing? You said you're educated, you know yes. what I mean? Yeah, your mom, you know what I mean? What what's going on? Married and you got a book. Let's talk yeah. about all that. Let's talk yeah, about I, well, yeah. So I'm an educator. I've been teaching 12 years. Um, yeah, mom of three boys, boy mom, married. Boy mom. Yeah, boy, ma, <laughs> married, uh, you know, and I'm a life coach, now author. So um, this is just, it's just amazing when I, when I look back and I just, I'm just blessed. You know, my book is flying off the shelves. I launched uh, November 2nd. I've already sold over 85 copies. Oh, man, that's and I'm like, what? Like, I cannot believe what it. What is going on here? I'm a author. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, like little old me, you know, yeah. young girl from AV, you know. So first of all, I want to say congratulations, congratulations to to turning your 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 situation and and your obstacles into something beautiful. Thank you, right? thank you. And, and, and I grew up with you, you know what I mean. I'm That's class right. of one, so I got a chance to develop a relationship with you, and yeah. and it's really cool to see a peer of mine be successful. That's right. That's right. That's right. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. And, you know, and the book is not just about me, you know, mm -hmm. it's little short stories about my life, but mm -hmm. it's more so to let other people know that your past doesn't dictate your future. Right. And right. that in the book, there are journal prompts where the reader can, you know, reflect and implement these strategies that I've created to grow forward from their traumas. Because if right. I can do it, you can do it, right? Absolutely. It doesn't stop us. So that's what the book is about. It's not like a, a tell-all about my life. It's a personal development, self-help for other people. That's so. dope. And that ties into you being a life coach. So you structure right. it out that way. So you give like the inserts of you, your, your, and then the reflection piece for them. Yes, exactly. So now you're kind of your story with their story at the same time. Exactly, exactly. Dope concept, dope concept. When did you even think about doing that? Who gave you that idea? Like, I'm going to put this together. <laughs> Oh, right. I mean, that's a, that's a, that's something powerful right there. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? You know, the Lord is going to lead you, but who was like, let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, when COVID hit or whatever, I wanted to, it's always been in me cause I'm a teacher, right? So it's right. always been in me to share my story with young women and boys too, but to share with them, because I remember, you know, middle school, Tasha, I remember high school, Tasha, right? right. So I started off um, wanting to speak at different schools. I already have the lane, so let me use that. And then I started taking this training and all of this, right? Speakers, courses, and stuff like that. Then COVID hit. Ain't nobody speaking nowhere, right? Everything's shut down. Yeah, you're in the house. Oh, like, and, <laughs> and who, who knew that there would be this virtual component, right? But yeah. everything was shut down, and I'm like, okay, I've done all this training. I'm ready to, like, you know, and now, um, so then somehow, I forget exactly when the moment, but life coaching came up somewhere. Like right. I must have seen somebody on Instagram or something. And I was like, hmm, oh. you know, started looking into it. And I am that friend. I am that person that people come to for right. advice and for, you know. So I said, okay, let me look into that. And I can do this still without 
speaking out. You know, I can still do this. I can do one-on-ones like right now and things like that. Yeah. And in my in my studies and in my practice, and um, I came across another sister coach, and she was like, you know, your story, like you really need to, you know, write a book. And I was like, what? Like, nah, right, right, right. <laughs> I was like, well, you know, I got a little book in um in fifth, in fifth grade in the library. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's eliminated too. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, I am an author. You know? <laughs> and then I just started writing um just this summer. Uh well, let me let me not this summer, uh April. April. I decided to start writing. I hired a book coach and I said I wanted to get it done before I go back to work in September. And wow. I did. So wow. That's such a blessing. So uh, again, I celebrate you. I think this is beautiful. Uh Let's talk a little bit and wrap this up. What do you think about this Facebook page that we created, the Long Live Amityville and the Amityville alumni event that's coming up in April? How do you feel about those things? Oh, man. I was, like, so excited to see because it's it, it kind of gives you, and that's, like, Facebook in itself, like, gives you those memories, right, those connections, those relationships and stuff, and it keeps us tied together because, you know, Amityvillians, we are, like, diehard AV, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, we can be that. anywhere. We, like, AV. Like, yeah. you know, just to have that. And I'm going to dust off my, I'm going to find my photo albums or something. Yeah, you got to find some photos. You got to contribute. I have, yeah, I have so it's many pictures as from sports, from homecoming. You need that contribution. Things. You need that contribution. But I salute you, man, for doing that because that is needed. It's necessary. You know what I'm saying? It's something that... Facebook ain't going nowhere. Our kids can see. We sh- I show my kids pictures from yeah. the, my old cheerleading picture, you know, yeah. when it popped up. Cool. So, yeah, I mean, I salute you on that. That's what's up. And I will be in attendance at that you gotta event. Be there. You gotta be there. <laughs> I you will be there. there. <laughs> so I just think, I think it's an opportunity for, like you said, the, youth, the, the, the younger demographic to see the success stories that's come before us. Mm-hmm. And I think it's an opportunity for us as peers to celebrate one another. Far too, uh, far too often we're at each other's neck for something. <laughs> competing, you know, competing, whether it's outwardly or even secretly. Right. But I think it's a good, a good opportunity just to spread some love and then even tie into who came before us. Yeah. Uh, because there's been a lot of there's been a lot of successful people to come out come out of Amityville, and you're you're in one of them. So uh, I think this is an opportunity to use that free platform. And yeah, and I think it keeps it fresh too because there were some things that I didn't remember or didn't know. So going fact. through it, it's like, wow, you know. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's really it's really relevant. And I, I appreciate you for that. Yeah, you're welcome. I think it's the same. Like there's been quite a few things that I've learned just digging up and even what people are posting. So I think it's just it's gonna continue to promote growth. So right. I think that's that's necessary too, whether you're in Emilyville or you're abroad. But again, thank you. Uh, we could probably talk for another couple I know, of I know. You thank know you mean? for having me. Yes, Keep doing you. it. Keep doing yeah. it because it, it, people are watching, people are saying it's going to, I can, I see it already. This is like, you know, going to blow. So Yeah, this is Keep excellent. Going. Same thing with your book. So let, let everybody know how they can get it. How can they get this book? I'm okay, telling, let's, so, let's yeah, it. Um, well, I'm on all platforms as at Tasha Talks Life. Um, okay. So you can find me there. And my website for the book is www.sisstopsulking s-u-l-k-i-n.com perfect and we'll put make sure we'll put the link in in all of the descriptions and everything like that so we can we can definitely support but i love what you got going on god bless you and the family keep raising the boys back at you back yeah. at you you're a girl dad right? i'm a girl dad i got the opposite thing going <laughs> right. on right yeah, beautiful girls beautiful family thank you, so much. thank you so much thank you for having me yeah, thank you so much. So, ladies and gentlemen, again, thank you so much for joining us. Make sure y'all click that bell, hit that subscription button, and share this beautiful content. Until next time, long live Emilyville. Much love, Tasha. Peace. Later.